spring pole snare. Uh, what I have right here is a small spring spring uh, tree right here. I'm not really sure what it's called, but it, it's put in place of the spring for my snare. It's just a really thin tree, probably about an inch and a half in diameter. But where I have the rope connected, it's probably only a couple centimeters. I'll show you how I did that. I looped it around. There's a branch, and I looped it all around the branch a couple times, and then I tied a triple knot. That's really all I know. And then you follow this down, and there's two um, fork, I don't know what you would call them, like a, a y, um, y branch or fork branch, where it's just those, has two, it has one there, and it has one here, so it's like a fork, and what, you, what I did was I hacksawed down a couple branches, I didn't kill any trees, just got the branches. And I sharpened the one end, so I hammered this down. Oh, I almost triggered that. And I have a piece of wood coming across the middle here. These two are hammered down, at like a perfect length for this piece of wood that I got. And then I have a sharpened little trigger piece of wood right here. Uh, I just moved it again. This trigger is about to snap. Um, and then I have a large, almost. This is the trigger right here. It's levitated it's off the ground so you could fit your hand underneath it so as an animal comes in and steps on the trigger the noose the spring will fly up and the noose will be caught around its leg it's really a foot trap you have the bait in here what I'm using is uh, some basically just bird feed for the squirrels there's some corn and stuff in there but um, you have this piece down here sharpened and in the ground and there's a Put a notch in there, and then this this end is sharpened. I'll show you once I trigger. All right, so I'm just gonna try and trigger the uh, the snare. I'm just gonna put my hand in there in place and see see what happens from there. So right there, it's not compl So as the animal steps in and gets his foot latched, here's the uh, notch I was talking to you about. But as the animal gets his foot latched, it's gonna try and run away. And as it runs, the snare is going to get more and more tangled, and it's going to get tighter and tighter. I mean, I could teach you how to tie a snare knot, but it's fairly easy. And uh, that's really all there is to it. And here's the notch I was talking to you about. It's just a small little trigger notch, I guess you could call it. And right here I have carved in... I carved that little notch in right there. Can't really make it out. So I have that carved in. So this this trigger, which is sharpened on this end and is kind of like just flat on this end, so it can fit into this notch right here. Where is it? So it can fit in there and not slip out. And then this can go into the trigger. All right, that's really it. That's my snare. If I catch anything, I'll be sure to upload a video, but uh, let's hope so. Actually, I set this up on the other side of the house, or in, in a different part of the woods, and I caught, I put a frog in as bait. I cut up the frog, and as you can see right here, there's claw marks, and I'm guessing it was a raccoon, because raccoons usually eat frogs, but uh, I didn't really catch anything. The raccoon must have slipped away. It's probably a bigger one. This is really meant for squirrels and uh smaller animals and I'm really just using a small skinny string so for the most part a raccoon could probably escape from a string but um that's why I need to get some snare wire all right thanks a lot guys it's my spring pole snare before I left I want to show you uh, what it would look like baited I kind of put in uh, some leaves around this frame not too much that it would get tangled up but I just left the corn and the sunflower seeds and all the other seeds underneath this branch but I gave I didn't pile it up directly under the branch because then the trigger wouldn't have snapped that's important if you're trying to replicate this so as you can see there's still space under there and also another thing when you create something like this you don't want to skin all the bark off off these um, branches because then it'll look less like enticing for an animal to come into you want to make it as natural as possible for the animal to see and 
you know, camouflage it too. I mean, if it's a nocturnal animal like a raccoon or a fox, sometimes foxes are nocturnal, but something like that, then you don't really need to be as assertive with that. You can just basically throw some stuff together. I mean, they're not really going to see it as much. Of course, they can see it at night, but it's not really that big of a factor for them as opposed to a squirrel who's really cautious when they come into a uh, place that they don't know or see something they don't recognize. So that's just another factor to set into play. All right, thanks, guys. And we danced. And we cried.